Hello. In this tutorial, I will show you how to set an image in the background of a viewport to prepare the scene for modeling objects. Before start, you should have a previous knowledge about the user interface and the graphics drivers. For this, you can check my other tutorials in the webpage www.macrotutorials.com. When you are modeling objects in 3D Studio Max, sometimes you need an image as reference for your model. So, you can use a picture in the background of a viewport as a guide for the object that you are modeling. The first thing that you need is some pictures from different points of view of the object that you want to create. You can find many useful pictures in different websites. I'm going to use this photo that I found on this website where there are many photos of blueprints of cars. Now, to set the image in the background and start modeling your objects. You should consider these tips. First prepare the images for the backgrounds using any photo edition program. But the measures and the images should coincide. For example, in this blueprint of a car, the size of the bumper of the car is the same in the top view. And in the front view. See. Now prepare one picture for each viewport. Back on 3D Studio Max. Load a picture is pretty simple, just select a viewport. I am going to start with the top viewport. Select the viewport, click on Views, in the main menu bar. Now, move the mouse over Viewport Background. And click here, in Viewport Background. This window appears. Is the Viewport Background window. Here, you can load the picture file. Adjust the animation parameters, when you need an animated background. And, adjust the picture in the viewport. Also, you can open this window using the keyboard. If you press the keys Alt and B in the keyboard, this window appears. Make sure that the keyboard shortcut override toggle is active. Well, to load the picture file, click on Files. And in this window select the location on your computer for the file. You can select several formats, even video formats. Once you have selected the right file, click on Open. In case you don't need the animation, so let us leave it like this in a moment I will explain you more about the animation. And, below it. The aspect ratio. Aspect ratio, is the relation between the height and the wide of the image. We can choose if, match the size and aspect ratio of the viewport. Or use the real size and aspect ratio of the picture. Or use the aspect ratio of the rendering output, for our background. Let us see it first. So, the background will have the size and aspect ratio of the viewport. And in this side, enable display background, else the background image is not shown. The option of look zoom pan is disabled when you selected the option of match viewport, here. Below it, you can choose if apply this settings to all viewports or just to the active viewport. And here, you can select the viewport to apply this. And click OK. The image is shown on the background of the viewport, see. If you pan the view or zoom in or out, the background remains as is. This is because we didn't enable the option of look zoom pan. Let us try another configuration. First, select a viewport. Press Alt and B on the keyboard. Click on Files, and select a picture file. Now, here. Select Match Bitmap, to use the aspect ratio of the image file. Now is available the option of look zoom pan, so enable it. Light display background is already enabled. Click OK. Now the background image is shown. The difference between this and the previous one is that when you pan the view or use the zoom tool, the background also moves. And the zoom also works. On the main toolbar, you find this button. Render setup. Here, in the common tab, you find the configuration options for the render. The actual configuration of the rendering output is 640 by 480 pixels. This means that the aspect ratio is in a proportion of 4 to 3. Close this window, and... Select another viewport, pressing Alt and B, appears the viewport background window, and... As always, load the picture file for your background. And here, select Match Rendering Output. Make sure that is enabled the Display Background option and the Look Zoom Pan option. And OK. The image appears as the background of the viewport, but don't using the original image aspect ratio, but using the 4 to 3 aspect ratio of the rendering output. The proportion of 4 to 3 is the regular image aspect for the old TVs or computer screens. You can change the rendering output aspect ratio. Clicking here, on the Render Setup button. And, click on the Common tab. Clicking here, you can change the output render size. You can create a custom size, or select a predefined aspect ratio. Here, we have the aspect ratio for high definition TV, click on it. 
Note, which change these four buttons. Now you can select one of these four resolutions, or specify your own resolution. For now I am going to use this one. Is automatically applied, so, just close the window. We need to update the view, just click on views on the menu bar, and move over viewport background. In this list, click on update background image. And, is ready. The background now looks different. If you take a close look, the background doesn't looks good, this is due to the configuration of the viewports, but we can fix it increasing the resolution. So, click on customize in the menu bar, and at the bottom of the list, click on preferences. The window with preferences settings appears, and select the viewports tab. At the bottom we find the information of the graphics driver that 3D Studio Max is using, in my case is Direct3D. Click on configure driver. And this configuration window appears, this window will be different if you are using another graphics driver such as OpenGL or software. Now, we find the different options for the background texture size. Actually, a selected 128. We can choose 512 or 1024 and the background will looks better. Or we can enable this option, match bitmap size closely as possible to use the resolution at the image file, and at the bottom, click OK. Click OK again. We need to refresh the background. Click on Views, and in Viewport Background. Click on Update Background Image and is ready. Now the background looks better. Load the backgrounds, but, is a good idea use the same configuration on all the viewports. Let us start with the top viewport, so select the viewport. Press Alt and B on the keyboard. And click on Files. And select the image file. Top. And, click on Open. I prefer to use the option of Match Bitmap. And enable the Display Background. And the option of Look Zoom Pan. This is the configuration that I usually use to modeling objects. Click on the OK button. And is ready. Now, do the same in the other viewports. We continue with, the left viewport. Then, select the viewport. Press Alt and B. Load the image file. Left. And, select the option of Match Bitmap. And make sure is enable the display background. And the option of Look Zoom Pan. Click on OK. And is ready. Now the front viewport. Is easy use of video as background image, just press Alt and B on the keyboard. Now, click on Files. In this window, select the video file. And click on Open. In a moment, I will explain this animation options. Note, that actually we don't have enabled this option. Animate background. Click on OK. Now we have the first frame of the video as our background image. If we click on Play Animation. This button here, on the bottom of the window. Nothing happens with our background. This is because, we did not enable the option of animate background on the viewport's background window. So, having active the viewport, press Alt and B. And here, enable this option animate background. Now, note this. This number indicates the number of frames on the video, 30 frames. Click on the OK button. Now, if you click the button and play animation, this one. The background becomes animated. See. But only from the frame 0 to 30. Because the video only have 30 frames. Click this button again, to stop the animation. Press Alt and B. In the group of animation synchronization, you can. Select the range of frames to use. Now we are using the full range from 0 to 30. The steps are for set the interval of frames, so now we use each frame on the video. Increasing it, we use only each third frame on the video, and so on. Here you can set the frame to start the animation, for example setting it to 10. And, selecting blank before start. Click on OK. The background apparently disappears but, if you move the frame slider, the animation appears on the frame 10. Now, press Alt and B. If you select hold before start and hold after end, and clicking OK. And moving the animation slider, the first frame remains until the frame 10. And the last frame goes on after the frame 40. And, again Alt and B. Select loop after end, and click OK. And now, moving the animation slider. The animation start again after the last frame, the number 40. See. This animated background is very useful when you are working in animation projects.